I'm going to take you through the process of baking bread right in your home without much kitchen aids or mechanical support. Um, I'm going to bake bread that will be sufficient for these pans. As you can see, I have only this bread pan and this one. And uh, since I bake it for the house, I don't mind using the cake pans because uh, my daughter has these cake pans. So I want to make sure that I utilize all of them. So I'm going to bake what is going to be sufficient for all these, to fill all these. So um, the quantity of flour that I will use is for this number of pans. Now, to begin with, I'm going to take you through the major ingredients that I'm going to use in baking my bread. Number one is honey. I'm also going to use eggs. And then I will be using yeast. This is the yeast, margarine, nutmeg, sugar, and salt. And then of course, my chief ingredient, the flour. For the flour, you will have to use hard flour because soft flour is not good for baking bread. So you will use hard flour. So to begin with, I'm also going to need my baking or my mixing bowls. I'm going to do a manual mixing with my hand. So I will use this one for the active mixing and then this one will support me. And then also I will need a cup of warm water, not hot, but warm water. It must be the point where you can dip your hand and keep your hand inside, warm water. So to begin with, I'm going to use I'm going to use um, this one and a half cup to measure it. If you are using a one cup, fine, but this is one and a half. This is one cup, but up to here is one and a half. So I'm going to use the one and a half cup and I'm going to take six of these. So six of these or at least seven. One. Two. Three. Six. It is for the home, so um, we are baking what is enough for the family for at least um, three days. I have a large family, so and my children, my, my family, everybody loves bread. And this particular bread is so special and so delicious, you cannot take your eyes off it. So everybody loves it. And the, the, the aroma or the, the smell of it actually is even enough to invite you to eat if you don't like, even if you don't like bread. So to begin with, I'm going to use half spoon of salt, half spoon of salt. I will also need seven spoons of sugar, depending on how you want it, but I prefer to use seven spoons. Okay. And then I'm going to add 
an amount of honey as for the honey you do you you know the nutritional value of honey so it depends on your personal preference if you are somebody who loves honey you can choose to add any quantity of your choice but you should make sure that it doesn't become too much as it's the, go the saying goes too much of everything is bad so that's enough and then I'm going to use three eggs Then I will also be using two spoons of margarine or at least three. I think two is enough or two and a half. That should be enough. Okay. So that's enough. And then um, we are good to go. So, with the yeast, two spoons of yeast, or two and a half at least, and then you add. half spoon of salt to activate the yeast oh sorry sugar to activate the yeast half spoon of sugar is added to the yeast in warm water now you close it close it and allow it to sit for about five to eight minutes But during that period, you can begin your mixing this way. So you start mixing the ingredients whilst you wait for the yeast to activate in the warm water. Okay, so let's check how our yeast is activated. You can see how foamy it looks. So you can now pour it. And then you begin mixing actively. Now for the water for mixing, you should make sure that you have um, a small quantity of warm water somewhere just in case the one that you add for the active mixing is not enough to mix the entire um, flour thoroughly well then you might have to add a little bit of warm water to ensure that you get it well mixed like my in my case as you can see the water is not going to be enough so I have already prepared some amount of warm water which I have also put aside just in case. So I will just have to add just a little bit. So you keep mixing with your hand like this. And when it becomes too hard and you can still see some flour 
like how this one appears, then you might have to add a little bit of the warm water. Mind you, no cold water because it can affect the activated heat. It is very sticky. Let me add a little bit of the water. That's enough. So I'll have to keep mixing until the stickiness disappears. It doesn't have to get stuck on my fingers. Neither does it have to be stuck in the bowl. stick to your hands anymore remember this is a special bread for your family it is highly nutritious because of the ingredients that were used full of protein and all the other necessary ingredients found in honey egg Butter. It serves as a, a good source of ingredients for the or nutrition for the family. So it is not just any bread, but this bread is highly nutritious. Oh, so, as you can see, after mixing it for a while. It now becomes stuck together and it doesn't stick anymore to your hand nor to the bowl. So when you attain it in this state, sometimes it is difficult to attain this state. And when you find out that after mixing for more than 10 minutes, the, the, the dough is still sticking to your hand, you might have to add just a little bit of the flour to help harden it a little bit so that it can it can attain this thing. So when you add just a little bit of the flour, it helps it to stick together. So it makes it hard enough to coagulate or stick together for you and then it becomes non-sticky to your hand. So then when you attain this state, it means it is now ready for kneading. 
So you transfer it to the hair surface where you can begin kneading it. Make sure the surface is neat and hard enough for the kneading process. So in my case, I'm still using this place since it is my computer desktop and it has a marble surface which is neat enough. So I prefer to use this one anytime I bake my bread. So you will prepare the surface with an amount of flour and you transfer it to it for kneading. I'm going to knead it for about 10 minutes. So you knead it like this for at least 10 minutes to make sure that the dough is smooth enough and well kneaded to give you the kind the right texture of the bread we normally enjoy. Kneading can be very good and it can be good to your health as well. It's another form of exercise. The kneading ensures that the dough is well mixed and smooth thin as well. And it gives it a texture that you love in bread. So you make sure you knead it well. If you had a mixing machine, you might have to use it. There is, if you are doing professional bread, there is a special machine that we use for the kneading. So that uh, it stretches the dough to give it the right texture. But since this is for the home, you will have to knead it with your hand to give you that texture that you want. So apply oil to the mixing bowl. Make sure the inner is a little bit smooth. Apply oil to make sure that when the bowl, when the dough rises in it, it, it can still be removed. It doesn't stick to it. So that is the reason why you apply oil. Any cooking oil will do, but in my case, I prefer to use the olive oil. So prepare it now. Then I put it inside the mixing. Now it's time for it to allow for, it, for you to allow it to rise. So you cover it and keep it on a warm surface. Okay, so after our dough uh, is allowed to sit for about 40 to 45 minutes, it rises and it is now ready for the final stage of the baking process.
so you press it to get rid of the air packs and then you transfer it from the bull back to the prepared surface you prepare this surface with a little amount of flour again and then you knead it just a little bit to get rid of the air in it knead it again until so the air in it disappears from it
this one is going into a round bowl, so this is okay. Since it is a round, this thing, I just prepare it like this. Bread. 